Art Journal for Beginner Series by Karen Virchel. Page 1. What's in a name? For this project, you're going to need some kind of journal. It doesn't have to be expensive. These are repurposed children's books. You'll need an assortment of acrylic colors plus silver and black. Yellow is always a good addition. An assortment of brushes, a makeup sponge or two, a stylus if you have it. Whatever stencil you have, it doesn't have to be big. We're only going to use it here and there. Paper towel, baby wipes, a spray water bottle, Mod Podge, gesso, a charcoal pencil, watercolor pencil, or something to edge. Step one, prepare the pages. Tape in the middle and gesso the pages to prepare. Now we're just putting on color and I'm just throwing the colors on the page and rubbing it in with my fingers. I always start with yellow and I find that yellow adds that little brightness, even if at the end very little of it actually shows. Sometimes I want it to blend and I keep the paint wet so it blends. Right there you can see the teal and the pink are making a lovely color. I didn't want the yellow and green to make kind of a brownish color. So I'm just adding paint here and there. It's kind of a sideways motion overlapping, adding more different colors. So here I've used a dark blue, an aqua or teal color, a pink, and a yellow. You can use whatever colors you like. In between I may dry a little and add another layer. You'll see as you play how colors mix. And if you like the effect, make it happen again. Sometimes I use the baby wipe to help blend. This acrylic paint is cheap dollar store paint. But use what you have. It could be a different brand, it could be a higher grade, it doesn't matter. If it's too thick going on, you may need to spray it with water. These paints are fairly liquidy, so I didn't need to do that. But I did find that I needed to add a little more layer to get more depth of color. Once the paints are on, I'm playing around and trying to get some blending happening. Stand back and look at it. See what you like. Okay, now it's time to grab a stencil. I'm just using drywall compound. It's very inexpensive and it goes on pretty much the same. I'm applying it with the straight edge of a credit card, which makes it nice and level. I don't want to get the stencil everywhere. I just want some here and there to build up some texture on my page. This book is, each page is about six by six comparing to the stencil. I realize right now that this should have happened before I put on the paint. So if you're watching, you could stencil the drywall compound or modeling paste, if that's what you have, before we put on the paint. But nevertheless, we can solve this problem. Always, always, always clean your stencil right after you put modeling paste or drywall compound. If you don't, you might as well throw it in the garbage. Dry the drywall compound completely with a heat tool or air dry. Now since I didn't put it on before the paint, I'm going back and I'm applying the paint into the texture. I really like the effect of the colors 
blending in the nooks and the crannies of the drywall compound. So I'm adding and making them blend there. Rubbing it in, making sure it gets into all the little the side parts. Putting more pressure or less pressure depending on how much I want to see that paint. And I'm taking the opportunity to mix the colors a little bit more. One trick that I do, if I'm not sure if I'm done a certain part of the art journal page, I take a picture with my cell phone. I step back and I look at it. You can see the texture here. I love how that looks. Setting that aside to dry, now I'm taking a little bit of my cheap dollar store silver paint and adding it to some of the blue, the dark blue, and some of the aqua color. This is a very cheap way of getting a metallic color. And I will even mix the cheap dollar store silver paint with my more expensive, my Liquidex basic colors. I'm just applying the silver lightly to the top of the areas of texture. I just want that little bit of shimmer to shine through. mixing the colors again, playing with it, seeing what happens and whether I like it or not. The good thing about Acrylix is if once it's dry, you can take a baby wipe and remove anything that's wet. There's just a close-up shot of the texture and how the metallic paint falls in it. So now I'm getting some black out. And I'm grabbing a makeup sponge, sponging off, and I'm just going to edge the papers with the sponge. I'm just going around. This kind of frames your, your page. Now, normally I do this later on, and I may touch it up. You could use rub a gelato around the edge if you have that, or ink tense blocks or an ink pad if you have that. But I'm trying to do these pages with a minimum of art supplies. And then I just want to put a little bit of black on the high spots on my page. I like the contrast. Give it a good dry. I printed off my name in a font that I like and I blew it up to I believe 150 but that will de vary depending on the font that you choose so I'm just cutting it out into squares this is one way that you can do it the other way is to actually if it's a thicker letter to cut it out like I am doing with the A and cut all the white off. You can choose which way you want to go. I'm going to show you how to finish both of them. Cutting it out definitely takes more time. But I've done both and I like the effect of both. So I'm going to go with the squares, the blocks, and I'm just arranging how I want my name to go. 
I'm thinking I might like hang it on a rope, but then I go, no, and you can play around with it. This is a good time to get out the camera and take a picture and see if you like it. So again, with the black paint and the makeup sponge, I'm just going around the edges of the paper. This gets rid of the white, gets a little bit of dark on the white on the top by the letters and just helps it fit into the page better. Now, if you were if you cut them out, I find sometimes I want it darker. So I'm just going to make the letters darker than they really are going to pop on the page. Using Mod Podge with a matte finish, I'm applying it to the back and then on top. And just making sure that all the edges and everything are stuck down and lying flat, especially where they go through the middle of the page. Give that a good dry. You might notice that where the Mod Podge touched the acrylic paint, it's a little bit shiny. If you don't like that or if it bothers you, cover the whole page in Mod Podge and then everything will shine the same. Make sure you cover it all because if you leave off a spot, that'll show up. And a dry. I know in other places, some people complain that Mod Podge sticks. I don't have that problem where I live, but you can use decoupage, uh, gel medium if you have it, whatever. So here I have gotten out a charcoal pencil. It is hard charcoal pencil. It's something I picked up, I think at the dollar store or at Walmart. I am just outlining it and then smudging it with my fingers to make it, give it a little bit of shadow and really make it fit into the page a little bit better. You can use a watercolor pencil, you can use an Intense Block, Gelato, or a liner pen. If you use watercolor or Intense, you're going to activate with a brush. But again, I wanted to be do these this series of videos really on the cheap, with inexpensive stuff for the beginner, because you do not need to have all the fancy materials to get the same effects. Just going around the page did make it a little bit darker and to fit in. So I'm getting the pink. And yes, make sure the lid is on. So there you go. And But never fear, because it's dry, a baby wipe will clean up the mess. So I have the pink, and this is a stylus. It has a thicker end and a thinner end, but you can use the tip of a pencil or the end of a liner brush. I'm gonna use the liner brush because you just get paint on it, dip in the paint, dip on the circle. Now this font happened to have that in it, that detailing in it, but if it doesn't, that's definitely something you can add on your own. Get inspiration from anywhere. Now, if you chose to cut out your letters and painted them black, you could do the same thing on the cutout letter. Now, here I am just adding water to the leftover pink paint, and I'm dumping it into a paper towel and getting the paper towel all wet and squishing it all up to get the pigment throughout the paper towel. You do not have to waste paint. 
this paper towel that will is now has this unused paint in it will be used in a upcoming project and I have a whole collection of colored paper towels you can add more than one color if you choose So I talked about how you can do the same dots on the A that you painted all with black. Just look at the, the original and put it in the similar places. One of the finishing techniques that you often see on Art Journal pages is drippage or splattering. So I'm going to do some splattering and I've taken the black paint and thinned it down with some water, taking a brush and I'm tapping the brush onto another brush and I get splatters. If I don't like a splatter or a too big of a drop goes because it's acrylic paint underneath it, I can wipe it off and start again. There you see me doing just that. If you're not getting the size spatters you want, try to thicken the paint or thin it. Trying on a practice paper is often a good idea. And there you get a close-up of the drips and the colors and the shimmer. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on the right so you get notified when page two goes up. Also, check out my blog. There'll be step-by-step -step instructions for this and following pages.